Hi guys, this is a video by Dark Link Does Math. The content in this video is geared towards 6th grade math standards. These videos are public so that my students may access this information easily, as well as anyone else looking for math help. I hope you find this video helpful. If you do not, I hope you can find what you are looking for elsewhere. There's a lot of information out there. Be aware that I'm not perfect, so there may be the occasional mistake. I apologize in advance if this should happen. So today, we're going to be going over lesson 1.3 which deals with squares. More specifically, what does it mean to square a number? We'll also talk about exponents in general and some information about perfect squares of numbers. So our first vocab term is square of a number. This is the value of a number raised to an exponent of 2. So the value of a number raised to an exponent of 2. Basically, this means a number times itself. So a couple of quick examples of this. Our first example, let's say I have 3 raised to the power of 2, or 3 squared, or you can say 3 raised to an exponent of 2. There are many ways you can say it. Uh, usually, whenever we have an exponent of 2, we say 3 squared. What does 3 squared mean? It means to take 3 and multiply it by itself. So 3 times 3, which would be, in this case, 9. Another example, let's say I have 4 raised to the power of 2, or 4 squared. This means if I were to expand it, 4 times 4, so a number times itself. In this case, 4 times 4 is 16. The most important thing to note about squaring a number, it does not mean to multiply by 2. Again do not multiply by 2. You simply take the number or your base, in this case 3, or here 4, and multiply by itself. So here we did 3 times 3. We did not do 3 times 2. Here we did 4 times 4, not 4 times 2. All right, our next term is base. Base is the number that is going to be raised to a power. The number that is going to be raised to a power. So in our example, 3 squared or 3 raised to the power of 2 3 is the number that is being raised to the power of 2. So 3 is our base. Three is our base. Three is the number that we're going to be multiplying by itself. All right, our next vocab term, exponent. Exponent is the number to which a base is raised. The number to which a base is raised. It tells you how many times it tells you how many times to multiply the base by itself. So in our quick example, 3 to the power of 2, the exponent in this example is our 2.
what is this 2 telling us to do? It's telling us that we're going to need to multiply 3 by itself that many times. So in this case, I would write down 3 two times and then multiply. So 3 times 3. If you look at our previous example, this exponent of 2 right next to our base of 4, the 2 is telling us to multiply 4 two times in a row. All right, our last term is a perfect square. Perfect square refers to the square of a whole number. I would recommend that you have memorized the first 12 perfect squares. It's going to make your life a lot easier. So the first perfect square would be 1. How do I get 1? Well, 1 times 1, or 1 squared. Our next one would be 4. How do we get 4? Well, that would be 2 squared, 2 times 2. Our next one, 3 squared, or 3 times 3, that's going to give us 9, our third perfect square. Again, we're going to go over these a little later, but I would recommend that if you have your first 12 perfect squares memorized, it's generally going to make your life a little easier in math. Okay, before we do some practice problems, we're going to go in depth a little bit more and talk about exponents. So we're going to use the example 4 to the power of 2, or 4 squared. So again, our small number at the top, our superscript, that is our exponent. What does the exponent tell you to do? It tells you how many times to write the base. The four the large primary number, that is our base. Our base is the number that you're going to be multiplying. So again, it's what you multiply. All right, so here's a few examples. And even though our focus today is on squares of numbers, so anything to the power of 2 or with an exponent of 2, we are going to look at just a few examples that differ from that. So the first one, we are going to start with a squared problem. So 4 to the power of 2 or 4 squared. So using this information and our vocab that we've just gone over, the 2 tells us how many times to write the base, in this case 4. So it tells us to write 4 two times and then multiply. 4 times 4 being 16. Notice we did not multiply by 2. If I wanted you to write, multiply by 2, we would have you write 4 times 2. Our next example, we're going to use a different exponent other than 2. So 4 to the power of 3. This is also known as 4 cubed. So that 3 right there, that exponent, it tells you how many times to write the base. So we're going to write 4 three times, and then we multiply. 4 times 4 being 16, 16 times 4 being 64. Our next example of exponents, 2 to the power of 6. Our exponent tells you how many times to write the base. So we're going to write 2 six times. 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, and 2. And again, the base, that's what you're going to be multiplying. So we're going to be multiplying 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Not sure if I said six of them, but there should be. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. 32 times 2 is 64. All right, our last example for exponents, we're going to go back to 
a squared example. So 10 squared or 10 to the power of 2. That exponent 2 tells us to write the base 10 two times. So once, twice. The base is what you're going to multiply. So we're only multiplying 10s. So 10 times 10, you get 100. Now an interesting thing, when you have exponents with numbers that end in 0, that exponent can act as a shortcut and tell you basically how many times to write that 0. So on 10 squared, technically we're doing 1 times 1 and getting 1. And the 2 tells me that I can write down two zeros. Zeros are always your friend. They're super nice. They make problems a lot easier. So again, we've got different examples with exponents. The exponents tell you how many times to write the base. You don't actually multiply by those exponents. OK, what's a common use for squaring numbers? Area of squares, to be precise. So our first practice problem says a square has sides that are each 8 centimeters long. You'll notice these little dash marks. Those dash marks mean they are all the same. So this side of that square is 8 centimeters. Here's a dash mark. So that's also 8 centimeters. There's one. So that's 8. And the top of the square is also 8. Our question wants us to find the area of a square. Area refers to how many squares you can fit on a surface. How many squares you can fit on a surface. So you could use this if you were trying to find like how many tiles covered a floor. If you're wanting to carpet a room or paint walls, you're going to need to know the area. And if the shape you're dealing with are squares, that's where being able to square numbers comes in handy. So first, we're going to go over the traditional formula for area of squares, which is area equals length times width. Now, I want you to think about squares. All sides are equal. So that means area equals length times width. Instead of that, I could technically say, well, the length and width are the same. So really, it's the same as doing area equals length times length. Basically the same number, right? Well, notice I've written down the same thing twice. Kind of like here, I have 4 times 4 twice. That basically means 4 squared. So I could change this to area equals length squared. So what am I basically saying here? I'm saying that for squares, this first formula, area equals length times width, it's the same as this new formula, area equals length squared. They're the same. You could technically use either formula to find the area of a square. Let's practice this new formula because, you know, multiplying length times width is just boring. Let's make it exciting. So we're going to find the area of the square. Its area equals L squared. Next step, area equals what is the length? The length is all 8. So I'm going to replace the L with an 8, write down our exponent of 2. What does 8 squared mean? It means write down 8 2 times and multiply. So area equals 8 times 8 is 64. And this is area. Area means how many squares you can fit on a surface. So I'm basically saying you can fit 64 little squares. What size of squares? Our unit of measurement is centimeters. So we're going to write centimeters squared. Again, what does that mean, 64 squared centimeters? If you look at this picture, if I cut it up, I'm saying that you can fit 64 one centimeter by one centimeter squares. They're not the best, but hopefully you get the idea. 
So basically one of these little squares is one centimeter by one centimeter. We can fit 64 of those. So if you imagine this being a large room and you wanted to put tiles or buy tiles for your floor, well, if it was this particular size, you would need 64 of them. That would be a very small room though. Yeah, eight centimeters, not very big. All right, so anyways, this would be our answer. Now, we're just gonna stick with squaring numbers for our next couple problems. The first one says, find the square of five. Square of five means five raised to the power of two. What does five raised to the power of two mean? It means take five, write it two times, and multiply. Five times five equals 25. So the square of five is 25. Again, anytime you see the word square and you're dealing with numbers, it means raise it to the power of two. Another quick example, this one is in number format. So seven to the power of two. If I wanted to think of that in words, that means the same thing as find the square of seven. So what does the square of seven mean or seven squared? It means seven raised to the power of two. That two tells you to write seven two times and multiply. Seven times seven is 49. So the square of seven, 49. Now we're gonna go over the first 10 perfect squares. And again, I would recommend that to make your life easier in math, you memorize the first 12. So first 10 perfect squares. If I start with one squared, that means take one, write it down twice and multiply. You get your first perfect square of one. Our next one, 2 to the power of 2, or 2 squared. That means write down 2 2 times and multiply. Our second perfect square is 4. Our third perfect square, 3 to the power of 2. That 2 tells you to write 3 2 times, multiply. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 is our third perfect square. Continuing, 4 to the power of 2 or four squared means take four times four, and you get 16. 16 is your fourth perfect square. Next, five to the power of two or five squared. That exponent of two tells you to write five two times and multiply. Five times five is 25, fifth perfect square. For our sixth perfect square, six to the power of two, that exponent of two tells you to write six two times, and multiply, six times six, 36. That's our six perfect square. Continuing, seven to the power of two, or seven squared. If I expand it, I get seven times seven, so that two tells you to write seven two times. And you get the square of seven, or the seventh perfect square, which is 49. Eight squared, or eight to the power of two. That two tells you to write eight, two times, multiply, and you get the eighth perfect square of 64. Couple more, nine squared. That two tells you to write the base nine, two times, and multiply, and you get 81. And then the 10th perfect square, 10 to the power of two, tells you to write 10 two times, and multiply, you get 100. So the 10 or the first 10 perfect squares are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. So these numbers are perfect squares. What makes them perfect squares? Because they are squares of whole numbers. We took one squared, two squared, three squared. So we are squaring whole numbers 
So our first 10 perfect squares right there. If you memorize these, it's going to make your life a little easier because these numbers appear often If you look at a multiplication chart, they're usually the ones that go diagonal. If only I had a multiplication chart to show you. Sorry, I don't. All right. So again, that covers our lesson over squares of numbers. Again, main idea, when you're squaring a number, that exponent of 2 tells you to write the base two times and multiply. I hope this has helped. If it doesn't, don't forget, there are many videos out there. I hope you can find one that gives you the help you need. Y'all have a great day.